Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Off the Clock. I'm your host, Sierra Jones. Today we have UH head men's basketball coach, Coach John Schulman. We're going to be getting to know his family, along with an insight in this upcoming season, and he's going to tell us how he has grown throughout his coaching career. Off the Clock starts now. Welcome back. So coach, if your team is sitting right behind me, how would they describe you? My team, how right they, behind me. They're right behind me. Uh, they would say I'm a nut. Okay. They say I have energy. Mm-hmm. And they would, they would all to a T say that I loved them de dearly. Okay. Um, I love winning, mm -hmm. but I love those kids. And I'm old. And I've Play learned, not. I'm old. Okay. All right. And I've learned Listen, I've been coaching my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so I learned, I was a head coach at Chattanooga for nine years. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think those kids at Chattanooga would say that same thing. They would say I was a nut, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure they would all say that they knew that I loved them. Mm -hmm. These kids here can honestly say that. What changed? Um, guys mature a little different than you females. Right. Y'all mature at 12. <laughs> we mature about 50. And, and um, so I grew up. I grew mm. up. I did not like myself as a basketball coach at Chattanooga. And we won. We went to two NCAA tournaments, yeah. played against Chris Paul and Wake Forest, had Steph Curry in our league. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, but I grew up as a coach and, and also probably um, coaching my own kid. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're coaching your own kid, you can't act like an idiot. Right. And at Chattanooga, I pretty much act like an idiot for about nine <laughs> years. Um, and I haven't done that here. Hmm. What made you want to be a coach? Is there someone that influenced you? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. That's a great question. I, I think if your name, you know, coaching is not a job. It's a mm -hmm. calling. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. um, and you either have that calling or, you know, it's also a sickness. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a sickness and a drug <laughs> is being a coach. Um, but I, I knew when I was in eighth grade, I wanted to coach, mm. period. And, and I had coaches, I had coaches in front of me, like a high school coach that, I mean, I adored. I mm -hmm. thought he was the greatest guy in the world yeah. as a fly is about to hit me <laughs> in the head. Uh, but but I, I wanted to be him. He mm -hmm. impacted my life. Being called coach, I, I, I told this class of the day, being called coach is like I would say in the military, someone got a chance to call him a general or a sergeant mm -hmm. or a lieutenant, yeah. and they go, man, that's how I feel about being called coach. Hmm. I love that. Now, you, I, you teach at, right? And then you also coach high school, correct? Yes. Right after you teach at. So, so at, at Chattanooga, I was there for nine years as head mm -hmm. coach. Um, as you get older, you got to make decisions. Right. Are you going to keep chasing the dream? Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to take care of your family? What are you going to do? Yeah. I've got three young boys at that time. Two of them were at Macaulay, all boys private school in Chattanooga, and that's mm -hmm. where they wanted to be. Um, Max, what do you want to do? Well, I want to stay at Macaulay. Tanner, what do you want to do? Uh, Dad, I'll do whatever, but he wanted to stay at Macaulay. JC, what do you want to do? Let's roll, Dad. We'll go wherever. <laughs> All right. It's funny how that happened because the next time JC didn't want to leave Macaulay. So you make a decision. Right. And, and you choose, you know, a lot of people choose profession over family. Mm -hmm. I just didn't. Um, I, I didn't want to live off somewhere else and my family was doing this. We're a very close-knit family. Mm -hmm. So close that, you know, Max is one of my assistants he, yeah. now. Tanner's playing for us and JC's back in Huntsville going to MA. Yeah. The, the home, your, your yeah. home. Um, and so we chose family over profession. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said I've committed professional suicide. And I said, <laughs> well, that's probably maybe true. Yeah. But I'm going to keep my family. And, and to this day, we've kept our family. And do you, obviously you're coaching now at D2 level and all the above, but do you prefer coaching high school? Did you enjoy it? Do you um, prefer college? <laughs> I, I have a very college mentality. Yeah. Um, I have to be, I'm wired. I got to be doing something all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and I loved coaching in high school. I loved the season. Mm -hmm. Before, I, I didn't. I didn't have my guys. Half my yeah. guys were in football and half of them doing it. After the season, half of them were playing baseball and track. Right. I, I, like, I'm wired in that here's a preseason 
Mm -hmm. Here's our season. Mm -hmm. Then we go recruiting. Then we got camp. And then we got preseason. And yeah. then we got, I'm wired that way. Mm -hmm. And so, but I do think, I do think the best coaches around are high school coaches. Mm -hmm. And I think they have to be. I think in theory, our greatest coaches that we have mm -hmm. need to be in middle school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's where you can impact kids the most. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not, we're not, I think I'm impacting kids to a point, mm -hmm. but we recruit great kids here. Right. And so it's harder to impact a 19 year old kid. Mm -hmm. um, now, 17 year old kid, you're, you got they're, some, they're, yeah. yeah, but gosh, oh my, those 12 and 13 year old kids, yeah. you can really impact them. But we, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. We stick to people in middle school. Oh, that's not real important. That's the most important. Yeah. But that's another, that's another segment <laughs> of your show here. Um, and so I loved coaching. I just love coaching kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, are we coaching basketball or are we coaching people? Yeah. We're supposed to be coaching people through the basketball. basketball. Yeah. And so I had a great time. I was at Macaulay, all boys, private school. We had 90 kids in a program. I was involved wow. with the sixth grade team, the seventh grade team, the eighth grade team, the freshman team, the JV team, and the varsity team. I was involved in every one of those programs, and I had a blast doing it. Yeah. But my mindset probably is more for college than high school. The structure. Yes. Yeah. I, it's with this brain, as my wife will tell you, there's something really <laughs> wrong with me. Um, and I've got to, as my knee's shaking mm -hmm. right now, I've got to be wired and I've, I've got to be you doing gotta be something. You got to be on the go, on the move. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I know you have a pregame ritual. What is it? I, I, you know, before, when I was younger, I ran. Oh. All right, I ran, I ran. When I was at East Tennessee State, uh -huh. we ran the steps and we sat in the same seats. And, um, but we, we kind of had it rock and roll mm -hmm. at, at that moment. I, I do, I do to a point, you know, we, we, you know, I used to think pregame meal was mm -hmm. a sacred thing in college. <laughs> and so I was at Chattanooga, ch pregame meal. Boy, if you, if you smiled, if you laughed, if you talked, I mean, you were disrespecting the game. I mean, you can't do oh, that. Oh, like silent. Oh, like, absolutely. Oh, we got to okay. focus on the game. <laughs> well, all I was doing was making them tight. Right. Pregame meal, I come down to UAH, and I was like, what do we do for pregame meal? Well, we go to tenders. Hmm. Do they have a back room? No. Well, how do we do this? Well, you'll see. I went to ten. It was like a fraternity party. <laughs> Everybody's on their phones. Everybody's eating chicken tender. We got a game coming up. And I was like, I'll just kind of watch this and see. Yeah. I learned. Hmm. You know, that's the great thing. Uh, uh, most people, as they get older, they stop learning. Mm -hmm. I kept learning. Mm -hmm. And so I learned. I learned from the kids. I was like, why would you be having fun during pregame meal we got a game to play <laughs> well isn't the game supposed to be fun yeah you're right you know but we all take ourselves way too serious mm -hmm. that's the thing i've learned about our program here we take basketball really serious yeah but we don't take ourselves serious at all mm. we, we we don't we we have a good time and so that pregame ritual, and then and then COVID stopped it, and so instead of going to tenders, you we brought, brought tenders <laughs> in, and so we we have fun. Yeah. And I, I don't make them tight. I did at Chattanooga, mm -hmm. and and I failed. You know, even though we went to two NCAA tournaments at Chattanooga and won four regular season titles, I didn't yeah. feel good about it. I feel good about what we're doing here. And do you have a personal pregame ritual you do as a coach? You know, I I. I by the time I get back to the house, yeah. all right, I do, you know, like I leave back at five o'clock to come back here. Okay. And I will be on in the car at five. Okay. And I will take a shower at four. All right. <laughs> and and I will put on the same clothes. I yeah. have literally worn the same pair of pants. No one knows. But no now one they knows. Do, and, but. And, and, and those, those Thursday, Saturday games are a little shaky because. Right. Oh, sorry. It may not be dry clean turnaround. or clean, all right. <laughs> but I will wear the same pants, and I, I will wear the same socks and and the same shoes. But I'm not superstitious at all. Are you sure? Not a bit. Mm. Not a bit. But um, that would be it. Um, I'm very superstitious. Uh, you know, it, it, heads up, Penny. I, I'm picking up, and I'll collect them during the season. Right. And it has absolutely nothing to do with. But the you game. switch up your shirt. Um, call. You sometimes we're like a, a collar polo. To, to the point now, at Chattanooga, I wore suits every game, mm -hmm. and I was miserable. 
think, you know, people probably got hot. People like think COVID was a bad thing, and it was. It affected a lot of people. Mm -hmm. On the serious note, it did affect a lot of people. For me, COVID allowed me to go forget ever wearing a suit again <laughs> and and collared shirt or a three quarter zip. Yeah, perfect. And it's and it's cool. We oh can, yes, yeah. Yes, and I don't have to look like an idiot yeah. over there with the suit on. And you and, don't sit down. You you pace. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, I I it's stress. <laughs> I, I let my stress out by pacing a little bit. That's um, a good perspective. I like that to use that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, but I love. I I just you know. Maybe coming back and those players sit behind you mm -hmm. again. Uh, hopefully they say, "I love life. Mm -hmm. I, I love life, and I've, well, I've lived it to the to the most." Being around you, you feel that, and your energy. Well, I, I hope I, you know, I don't know what my core values are, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I want our team to be tough. I want them to have great energy. Yeah. We have great energy. If you came and watched us practice, we have mm -hmm. great energy in practice. You've come yeah, over and watched. Yeah. We have great energy. Yeah. And then I want our kids to love each other. Mm -hmm. And and probably not a whole lot after that. Like, what if everybody did that? Yeah. What if everybody in the work showed toughness and resiliency and come to work every single day? Yeah. And they have brought great energy. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, how's it going? Another day in paradise. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. Right. Nobody right. wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Man, I'm having a great day. How about you, man? You having yeah. a good day? Or how you doing, man? I ain't, I'm not, yeah, I'm kind of struggling a little bit, but I'm, we're going to get through it. Yeah. And then and then love each other. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah, I it's love okay. that. You can definitely feel it when I have watched you guys practice. Just when you walk in, you really could hear your guys, like when as soon as you come into, not even the gym side doors, but the front door, you can just hear the loudness and that's the That's high hopefully fives our culture. And, yeah. You know, that's hopefully our culture. I never, you know, I'm not a music person. Mm -hmm. All right. So, like, I will drive eight hours recruiting mm -hmm. and never play the radio. And drive eight hours back and never play the radio. have some deep thoughts. Deep thoughts are going through yeah. this head. Um, and they convinced me last year, or maybe two years ago, start playing music during shooting. And I was like, what, 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 what are the music during shooting? <laughs> We started playing music during the shooting, and it gets me going. I, yeah. I love it. And then we started playing music during camp. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is like the greatest thing. I've missed out on this yeah. all these years. Yeah. So now I'm a music person. Uh, during shoot-around, too? Like before uh, a game? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. do shoot-around. Uh, Lionel Richie, mm -hmm, the okay. Commodores, and Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's an interesting and you combination. Met, now, these old guys back I know here, who that is. you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but these old guys, absolutely. So, like, you mentioned the success that you had at UT Chat. How did you, because you also came into your age with, you know, Lenny Acuff just went off to Lipscomb, and that, that's, that's tough. How did you take what you've learned from UT Chat and the success you had and bring it here and also be you at the same time? Well, that was, that's an unbelievable question because this is Lenny Acuff's program. Yeah. All right, and this is his it, this is his land. I mean, he's from Huntsville. He did an amazing job here. Mm -hmm. And you don't ever want to be the next guy. Yeah. You know, is yeah. John Wooden, and then you're the next guy. Mm -hmm. Who's the next guy after John Wooden? No one knows. Yeah. So you don't want to. And I had, you know, I didn't have a choice. I wanted to I wanted to get back in college. Yeah. And, and coach. And um, so we, we did not change a whole lot. Mm -hmm. He had things in place here. He had the culture in place. He had the offensive scheme in place. There was no need to come in and put my fingerprints on it. It's my program now. Yeah. It's my way or the highway. It didn't need to happen. And so you swallow your ego mm. and you say, hey, it's working. Let's just continue doing it how they've been doing it. Yeah. And, and our first game, because, you know, UAH scores the ball. We score. And um, – our first game was down at Montevallo against um, St. Leo, and I'm taking over for Lenny Acuff, mm -hmm. and I'm trying, and we are down 27 to 10, uh, mm -hmm. with about four minutes to go in the first half, and I was like, these people are gonna run me out of Huntsville immediately. <laughs> Thank God we came out and won the game, but it's been, you know, you're trying to put your fingerprints on it at yeah. the same time, keeping the culture the same, mm -hmm. and I just be honest, I've done, I've done a decent job in one area, I've, I've protected the culture hmm. we get great kids yeah we get wonderful kids and I let my coaches coach mm -hmm. we got two former players on my staff I let them coach the offensive side mm -hmm. and um, they know the offense better than I do uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I, I let my coaches coach and we have really stayed I would say all the fans that come to our games 
it really looks like UAH basketball. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily look like Lenny Acuff basketball or John Schulman. It looks like UAH basketball and Lenny Acuff started that and we just try to maintain yeah. it. Yeah, and I'll say you've done more. I know a lot of people would agree with me that you've done more than just a decent job. You've done a great job. We are surviving. Yeah. Um, we, we have been very fortunate. We've, mm -hmm. we've I've been here four years. We've won four GSC championships. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. won two regular season championships and two tournament championships. But I say we. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be in the team pitcher anymore. This is, at Chattanooga, it was about me and my contract. Mm -hmm. And I needed to go to the NCAA tournament because I needed to, what am I going to do with my career? Yeah. Um, my family wanted to stay in Chattanooga. It was about me. Here is has nothing to do with me. Yeah. It has everything to do with those kids. And we have amazing kids. And um, we lost, you know, I'm in a little bit of a panic. Uh, you know, we we lost a couple really good players. Yeah, you know, C.J. Williamson's in Spain. Yeah, Max is on our bench, and Chaney Johnson's no. at, at Auburn. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we are kind of relying on the culture mm -hmm. and our kids that we brought in and the development of our program. And we'll see. We'll see if we can go five for five. Yeah, I believe in you, Coach. I appreciate that, Yeah. Sierra. Before we go, so what advice would you give anyone that – you've already shared some really great things just about what you've learned at Chattanooga and now what you've taken in. But is there anything else that you would give advice for someone that wants to be a coach, even college coach, high school? I, I, I've yeah. talked to you about this. You have? All right. Passion. Mm -hmm. it, it ain't about coaching. It, if Find whatever. Back in my day – well, you, you had to go to high school, and then you had to go to college, and you had to go point A to point B to point C. And, mm -hmm. and if you didn't do it, you were a failure. You're a loser. Now you got so many things. Mm -hmm. Just find passion. Yeah. Find passion for whatever. If passion, if, if, if school is not your thing, before you, we made you go to school. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm not a believer of that anymore. I think education is huge and very important. But, but. You can, you can find, you just got to find your passion. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you, like, like, like Dalton Dodd. Dalton Dodd's one of our players. He is so excited. He's passionate about his mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I can say this. It's okay. <laughs> his his, his mother-in-law, his girlfriend's mom, they're going to okay. get married hopefully. I hope he doesn't <laughs> screw that part up. Uh, has, got a, has got a business about, about working on refrigerated trucks. Hmm. All right, on the trailer part of it. And he did that all summer. He's passionate about that. Mm -hmm. He's excited. He was like, Coach, when I get my degree, I've already got a job. I'm going to take over the company. He's passionate about that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're passionate in coaching or working on refrigerated trucks or working in logistics or working in business or working at a funeral home. Mm -hmm. Be passionate about it, and then you don't ever have to work. Yeah, I love that. You have said to me a few times, and – I, really I told, good. And, and yeah. you, you are so talented Thank that you. You, you could do multiple things. You just got to find what that is. Mm -hmm. and, and don't freak out when you're 22 years old or 23, 24, 25 and you hadn't found it. Mm -hmm. We all are looking for it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the problem with older people is we lose that passion and we lose that hope. I won't. Yeah. Thank won't. you, Coach. Find your passion. We'll be right back to hear what Coach does when he's not here at UAH. Hello Huntsville is a weekly lifestyle audio and video podcast produced in studio and on location to showcase Huntsville's best activities, entertainment, neighborhoods, and all the unique attractions that make the Rocket City one of the top cities to live in the nation. Our primary audience is adults who live, work, play, and innovate in the Huntsville metro area. And each episode will feature Cynthia Joyner in conversation with business owners, decision makers, elected officials, and some of the city's most compelling personalities telling the stories of her hometown. Whether you're local, new in town, or just passing through, Hello Huntsville will have something for you.
Welcome back. So, Coach, when you're not here or you're not in your office, what do you do on your off day if you have one? Um, you know how people talk about that that you are who you are. Mm -hmm. You're not your job. Mm -hmm. All right. And and so this is not who I you know this is not who I am. Mm -hmm. I am this guy. This is just what I do. Mm -hmm. I think in coaching that's not correct. Mm. I think in normal jobs that this is, you know, this is what I do. This is who I am. This is who I am. And I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I love coaching. And when I'm at home, I'm, we got done last night. It is Sunday night. We practiced till 5.15 to 7.15. We did our recovery with Ryberg. So mm -hmm. we ate dinner together. We did a little character coaching. That night we're doing the John Wooden's book. Mm -hmm. and, and I went home and watched tape. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds like an illness, <laughs> uh, and it is, but that's my passion. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm up in the morning, pumped up, ready to go today. And so it, it, it's, you know, what do I do? I, I, I love watching college football. Mm -hmm. um, I love watching college basketball. I try to learn. Mm -hmm. I love Nick Saban. I wish he would date me. Yeah. All right, not really, but I got a chance to meet him this this summer, and it was a thrill. Yeah, I love how he does his business. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to improve as a coach and a human. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not done with life, and so it, it is. What do I do in my free time? Um, I do walk a little bit. Okay, but I, I'm not this exciting guy. My wife was nice enough to follow me down to Huntsville, and um, it, I, I drive her crazy, mm -hmm. um, but we, we, we just kind of do our thing. We're yeah. very family-oriented, mm -hmm. you know? We, we, we've got all three of our boys here, yeah. and um, we're very fortunate about that, and we're blessed to have that, and we hang out a lot together. How has that relationship been with your son being on your team? Well, it, it's interesting. I, I, I coached him a little bit at Macaulay and okay. coached Tanner, the middle one at Macaulay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I want to coach him. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to be around him, but I, I don't think I'm this, um, I, I, I've talked to parents who coach their kid. Boy, I'm harder on my kid than any other kid. I'm mm -hmm. harder. Well, if I was your kid, I would say, dad, don't coach me. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need, just be fair. Yeah. Be fair with me. I think I'm fair. Uh, my first year with Max, he never started a game. Mm -hmm. All right. And he was our leading scorer. I may have been over backwards the other way. Yeah. But, but um, I think we have a great relationship. We don't, we take it home when it's time to take it home. We've mm -hmm. had, honest to God, I've coached him for many years. We had one bad day. And, and Max acted like a complete buffoon at Macaulay, and it happened to be JC's birthday, and like he wouldn't speak to me at dinner. But besides <laughs> that, it's all good. Um, I don't know about the young. I've never coached the youngest, mm -hmm. but I've coached the other two, and we've had a great time. And we, uh, watching Tanner Schulman get up on that ladder last year and cut down that net was yeah. one of my great memories of, of coaching. And my first year at UAH, Max down in Sanford, Got a chance to cut down those nets with my best buddy behind there in the stands. And I've got a great picture of them. And my best buddy passed away three weeks later. Mm -hmm. And so, like, coaching is a journey. Mm -hmm. And everybody's life's a journey. You're living mm -hmm. your journey right now. Mm -hmm. And it's a book. Yeah. You know, I don't know what chapter I'm on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a journey. And you learn and you grow and uh, you make memories. And, you know, people think our memories are made just on the court mm -hmm. um they're not in the, in that journey with your team i mean the mo the fun that we had and the hard times that we had yeah as a team not on the court are the things that you remember when yeah. it's all over and they'll cherish the most too yeah, th yeah. those are the, <laughs> the locker room after a winning a championship oh, yeah. or or <laughs> you know it, I'll, I'll tell this story max uh last year no i'm sorry two years ago um, in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a very special bond with Huntsville with Lee High School because I recruited a kid named Eric Robertson. Mm -hmm. yep. And E-Rob played for me at Chattanooga. Yeah. And on, that, on, a, on a Monday night, um, we, had just, we're, we knew we were going to the NCAA tournament. That next day, Monday night, um, Eric was playing a pickup game in Knoxville and passed away. Yep. 
And mm -hmm. but Eric to me was war number fifteen, mm -hmm. and and for me at Chattanooga that was E Rob, yeah. that was Eric Easy E, and uh, we play that next Saturday. We play Embry Riddle. Mm -hmm. My son wears number thirty three. He slashes his eye open, um, and he's got to leave the game. Got to get stitches during the mm -hmm. middle of the game. Comes back in the game, makes a big three, and we come back and win the game. Wow. And it was really cool. After the game, my youngest was down there with me. He was like, Dad, 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 pointing at Max. I was like, yeah, I know. He made a big shot, JC. <laughs> and he was like, no, look at his jersey. Hmm. It, he came back in wearing number 15. Oh, that's and that was the Saturday after that Monday that Eric away. passed away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, Eric, Eric was a high-level three-point shooter. And yeah. Eric helped. Those are the memories mm -hmm. that you have in this journey. And yeah. it, it's... You know, I used to think, and that, this is the deal, I used to think it was just about the games mm -hmm. and that people liked me if we won mm -hmm. and they hated me if we lost. That's a hard way to live. Yeah. And I realized after the Chattanooga experience that, just to be honest, nobody really cared. Mm -hmm. Nobody really cared. I thought the world revolved around me mm -hmm. at Chattanooga, and then I got a good lesson that I had nothing to do with it and that everybody was living their own lives. Yeah. So if everybody's living their own lives, why don't I just focus on these young men's lives mm -hmm. instead of worrying about the game? Yeah. And since we've done that, it's it's turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, and Eric was an amazing person. I actually, <laughs> I met him for the first time. He was actually helping out at Madison Academy yeah. with Coach Blackston yes. when he was there. And that's when we worked a couple of camps together. A lot of black um, guys from Huntsville, Alabama are teaching Spanish at MA. Yeah, I know. A lot of black <laughs> I, you know, that's what Eric, Eric, I, I passed him in the middle of downtown Chattanooga one time. I was like, hey, Easy, what are you doing? He said, Coach, at the end of each semester, I take my mock bucks, mm -hmm. my extra money, and I go buy Chick-fil-A sandwiches for the homeless, and mm -hmm. I feed them to the homeless. You know, yeah. people don't know this, but Eric and his wife, you know, only Eric could marry Jerrica. All mm -hmm. right, Eric and Jerrica. They were, they were going to a third world country. That's why Eric learned yeah. Spanish. Yep. They were going to a third world country to, she was going to be a doctor down there mm -hmm. and he was going to save those kids. Yeah. And so there's not, there was not a greater human in the world mm -hmm. than, than Eric Robertson. He yeah. was a pretty special guy. That's why we, because I speak Spanish too. So when he started talking, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. very he rare, just, but he, yeah. He's a special, but you meet these kids mm -hmm. and you get involved with these kids along your journey yeah. and they touch your lives. And um, and thank God Eric touched mine. Yeah, mine too for the short amount of time yeah. that I met him. Yeah.